Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, so, a few things about our two cars that you see here, our latest introduction for the Range Rover family. Uh, but I want to give you uh, just a little brief um, introduction or like a reminder about <coughs> Land Rover, our brand, and our journey. So, Land Rover is, you know, rooted in capability, the history of Land Rover, 70 years. So this is where we started, and you can clearly see the evolution of the brand. And uh, you'll see Land Rover associated with the uh, celebrities, uh, the royal families, world leader, high achievers. So that means that the brand has moved to a luxury status, particularly um, after the introduction of, the, of Range Rover. So we are on a journey. What this is saying is that the heritage is incredibly important for us, but at the same time, we, we cannot look back. We always have to look forward. So the heritage is our starting point. We don't want to be pulled back by, by where we're coming from. Brand strategy. Um, Land Rover is the master brand, is at the top. And then within this master brand, we have three families of vehicles, Range Rover, Discovery, and Defender. Now you'll see that design and engineering integrity are at the top of each family. So design leadership is a prerequisite for Land Rover. Um, this is like an equalizer, uh, if you wish. We'll dial the, vers the, um, the refinement, the luxury, the sophistication on the Range Rover family the versatility in the Discovery family, and the durability on the, uh, on the Defender family. Now clearly Defender is not out yet, and uh, I think we've got a couple of pictures in here that you guys want to share. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when Defender will be out, this strategy will make sense, will be clear for everyone. In fact, Defender is the one that anchors the whole strategy uh, and is going to balance the whole strategy. So this is very important to understand the brand. Clearly, a lot of challenges are coming our way. Uh, it's very important to stay relevant. Um, autonomous driving, connectivity, electrification, all these uh, um, new things are coming our way. We are dealing with these things in a way that are actually in our favor. So what we're trying to do is not being dictated by these new technologies in what we uh, are supposed to do but actually use these technologies in our uh, own advantage. So a lot of uh, challenges coming um, in the future. Design strategy, this is the foundation of everything we do uh, at Land Rover, and it's based on uh, four key elements. So modernity, relevance, sustainability, and desirability. Um, desirability is the last one, but it's quite possibly the most important one. Uh, what that means is that Land Rovers are desirable cars, and we are connecting with our customer purely from an emotional point of view. So if before customer were approaching Land Rover from a functional point of view, now you just have customer that they just want to buy a Range Rover, they just want to drive a Land Rover. And clearly, Land Rover will do all the things that it's supposed to do. But it's a slightly different approach. So that emotional connection that we always refer to uh, with the customers. Um, sorry, this is not. So this is quite funny. Uh, I think maybe some of you uh, might have seen this. And uh, it's just a, a neutral interpretation of a good design. So if I click, this is our Range Rover, okay? Beautiful car, beautiful proportion. Volume and proportion is the prerequisite for good design. That's where you start. If you get that right, you get a good design. So if I click, I get this. <laughs> so this is actually a great slide because it's the same design. It's the same thing, but just look at the relation the body to the glass, the front and the rear overhang, the size of the wheels, um, all the feature on the body side. So what is this is trying to say really is that there's a 
huge amount of work in design to get to this point. And clearly it's, you know, it happens with engineers, but this is design's job to make sure that we end up with a car that looks like that and not like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a pretty, pretty powerful um, comparison to explain the, the basics of, the, of good design. Next one, um, with Velar. <laughs> Now this, don't get me wrong, this is not a, uh, the right or wrong, this is just two different philosophies, so I'm not trying to criticize anyone, I'm just trying to position our design. Um, there is almost a need, uh, you feel the need to, to do something different for the sake of it. We think that actually with uh, our design that is so reductive, with the Velar, you'll see now with the uh, with the new Evoque and with our future product, there is a quality to the design that will last much longer. So there's a quality to the design that has uh, more integrity. Um, there's a, um, a lot of uh, refinement in, in the surfaces and in the details. And clearly the result is quite different. I can extend it further and uh, quite possibly because the volume and proportions are incredible on this car. You really don't need much to bring it to life. There's a strong theme, that's all you need. Sometimes, overstyling is there to hide the fundamental issues with the, with the volume and proportion. So, I hope this is a very brief design one-to-one. -one. I hope this makes sense and helps understanding what is our job, or this is a part of our job, clearly, because it's quite complicated. Range Rover Velar um, SVAD, it's the car on the left. So it's clearly uh, building on the success of Velar. Velar is, uh, is, a, is a, just a stunning vehicle, an incredible silhouette, incredible side view, um, beautiful surfaces, incredibly modern. Um, winner of the World Car Awards, um, World Car Design of the Year in 2018. They really demonstrate our commitment to the design, to design excellent with our cars. So um, the Velar uh, SV builds on that success, wants to retain the integrity of that design, but there is a, a visual uplift uh, in some of the areas, like the front and the rear and on the side. On the front, you'll see there's a new grille. Um, clearly, bigger openings on the, on the on the lower and on the side. That is to feed the V8 supercharged and the, and the braking system to cool the braking system. So it adds uh, quite a strong character in terms of uh, uh, dynamic and performance. On the side, uh, the side moldings are now all body color. That actually. Um, drives your eyes towards the road and makes the car even more planted so it helps with the stance uh, of the vehicle. 21 and 22 inch uh, wheels that are um, exclusive for this car so very distinctive helps the differentiation and uh, it provides a further level of uh, personalization for the for the vehicle and then uh, at the back um, to complete the story really um, it's a new bumper with the um, exhaust finishers that are integrated for a very, very dramatic appearance. Um, finally, on the front, beautiful details and letters, real metal. And um, the last thing is the paint that you see is a satin version of uh, the Byron Blue, and it's a metallic paint finish that is part of our premium palette, and it just looks Fantastic, particularly when you see outside in the sun, the reflection that it takes is just incredibly uh, modern. The, the changes that we've done to the exterior are matched on the interior, uh, on the, the, we don't on the exterior, are matched on the interior. So we have elevated the sense of luxury and, uh, and uh, dynamic and sportiness, more crafted. Uh, and there's a curated choice of uh, trim finishes and upholstery. We include a new sporting steering wheel with a, a different uh, um, material tactility to the touch points. Um, there's an option for a fiber, uh, carbon fiber pack that um, 
again, enhances that performance character of the vehicle and enhances also the sense of luxury. Now, to add to the looks, the incredible looks of Velar, this is uh, the most powerful version of Velar with the, you see the numbers there, 550 horsepower, 060 in 4.3 seconds and a top speed of 170 uh, miles per hour. So I think this is just a killer combination, just a, a gorgeous looking car with incredible performance is, is, is the real deal. And to add to the exclusivity of this vehicle, this car will be uh, available to purchase just for one year. So we have our watch colleagues, they, they, they probably uh, are in um, sympathetic with this, you know, when you launch special editions, this could well become a collectible vehicle. So really excited. Next vehicle that we are uh, talking about today, I don't know if you can see it, a few people around there, just <laughs> So new, new Evoque, which we recently introduced. Now Evoque is, uh, clearly an incredibly important vehicle for Land Rover. <clears throat> and to talk about the new Evoque, we really need to talk about the first generation, just to understand the journey. So January 2008, we've introduced at the Detroit Motor Show uh, a concept car, the LRX, the car that you see on the screen now. And the reaction from the public was just phenomenal, like beyond our beliefs. And the car was so well received that we decided to turn that uh, dream into reality. So we translated the concept car into production in 2011 without dilution effectively. You can put them next to each other and you can hardly see the difference between the concept car and the production. So Velar sold almost 800,000 vehicles, won over 200 awards, and it really changed the way we do business in Land Rover, because this is a car that brought almost 80% of the customer into the brand, people that were not even looking at Land Rover before. So it's that emotional connection that I was talking about before, design leadership. So you understand the importance of this vehicle for us. Great ingredients, we definitely didn't want to go and change and uh, mess with that recipe, which is fantastic. So we maintain the character, silhouette, the raising uh, waistline, the falling, the falling roof, uh, the imposing wheel arches, the big shoulder, everything that uh, contributes to the character of Evoque is there. But we actually have improved the volume and proportion of this car because we have extended, we stretched the wheelbase, we put even larger wheels now up to 21 inch and we reduced the overhang so the presence on the road is even more dramatic than, than the outgoing model. What we really wanted to do, it was a refined evolution of a book. What I mean by that is, if you can see it, we have reduced a great amount of lines, a lot of visual noise that it was, wasn't necessary um, in the first place. Uh, we elevated the sense of modernity by doing this. So re uh, reductionism, like we call it, flush door handles, flush waistline, no roof joints. We even removed the wheel arch claddings because it talks to the urban nature of this vehicle. It really elevates the whole uh, perception of the car and a great piece of work with engineer to the fit and finish, the precision and execution. You, you'll be able to appreciate the, um, the way that the car is actually put together is on a different level compared to the original car. When you look at the front, very seamless front end. It really gives a sense of visual robustness and stealth appearance with slim headlamps, LED matrix headlamps, a very slim Range Rover grill. Overall, it's a very sporting and refined appearance, very confident. Uh, at the rear, strong athletic stance, very short overhang, the uh, black uh, graphic that runs um, across the whole width of the car really emphasizes that width and the way the car sits on the road. Uh, signature LED uh, tail lamps and then the rear glass, the letterbox rear glass. 
something that we fought really hard to retain. In fact, it's even maybe smaller than the older car because this fits in between the five door and, and the three door that we had before. So it's a very extreme glass, uh, but you heard from Ian, we got a brilliant piece of technology that actually uh, makes this, um, retains this beautiful design. On the interior, if the exterior is more of an evolution, on the interior is more of a revolution. So we really wanted to reconsider the interior, we wanted to elevate the sense of the, um, luxury and refinement, something that is normally associated with the, with the, with the, um, the full-size Range Rover. This is very important because now Evoque really feels like it belongs to the Range Rover family, just in a compact size. So you do feel the experience, the attributes, the quality that you get with the older Range Rover products just in a smaller scale. So um, great piece of work on the interior, uh, the Range Rover DNA architecture with a very strong horizontal emphasis that is dominant, um, intersected by a vertical um, element. Doors are more integrated, uh, there's a much higher level of detailing, increasing knee room, as I said, we stretch the wheelbase. That stretching the wheelbase is all gone to the second row where we're giving 20 millimeter more space to the, uh, to the occupants in the second row, which is a, it's a great achievement. Then we've got bigger load space in the back, in the trunk, in the boot, which one is English, which one is American. Um, and we've improved a lot of uh, small item storage everywhere in the, in the vehicle. So it, it's very, very usable. Technologies, the Touch Pro Dual, um, touch screen, we've integrated Apple CarPlay and uh, Android Auto, Auto integration. So uh, that's going to be a great feature as well. We talked about the rear glass. I agree with, the, with Ian. It takes a little bit, when I say a little bit, just a few minutes to get used to the different depth of field. But I've been driving Evoque in Greece for a few days. And I guarantee once you start using that, you just don't want to go back to the normal it's just fantastic the way that uh, this screen uh, uh, works, particularly when you have people sitting in the back or if you're carrying uh, a big load in, uh, um, in the trunk, so it's incredibly usable. Same thing for uh, uh, the clear ground view. This is clearly a very orientated off-road feature, but it's very useful in the city as well. Thinking about difficult parking space and narrow, uh, uh, streets or high curbs uh, it basically allows you to see the wheels through the bonnet and uh, I think we talked about this feature a few years ago I thought it was just a dream actually it's now available on the car and I think it's a really um, great piece of technology Corona materials complete the story of Evoque again the message is still the same much more refined, much more grown up palette for the exterior, um, much more sophisticated. Um, you know, our colors are named after places. This is a new uh, body color, soul pearl silver, very warm, very luxurious, clearly named after the South Korean capital. And then uh, the Nolita gray, which is the, the, the paint that is on the car next to you, which is actually my favorite color, if I can say that. And it's a very edgy, urban, modern, uh, uh, very contemporary um, mid gray, I'll say, that is named after a neighbor, neighborhood here in, uh, in New York. The big story, though, on the coloring material is how progressive the materials that we used on this car are. There's a, there's a, there's a big story about Evoke and moving things forward and about uh, giving the option and the choice to our customer in, uh, with leather and alternatives and with materials that are very sustainable. So I'm going to take you quickly through some of the materials that we are introducing. Um, eucalyptus melange textile is what we believe the first plant-based textile we're offering on, the, on this vehicle. It feels incredible. I mean, just the the tactile experience on that material is phenomenal. And then the Ultra, Ultra Fabric PU, 
Um, it's, it is really a pioneering uh, technology. There's a lot of uh, recycled uh, elements and 99% uh, of the solvents are recaptured and recycled during the making. But what is really uh, incredible about the PU Ultrafabrics, again, is the tactile feeling. When you, when you rub your hand against it, it just feels quality, something that feels appropriate for a Range Rover. You are familiar with the dynamic, dynamic suede cloth and the premium textile in collaboration with Kvadra that we have uh, uh, introduced on uh, Blar and we are um, posing this on, uh, on the ebook. So there's a big story with this material um, that really shows a new way forward. It's, it's process is going to take some time. It's about educating the customers but it's a process that it's irreversible and it can only make me proud to be part of a company that puts so much uh, emphasis in this. Uh, I do feel like we are pioneering. I already see other OEMs are getting onto this subject. Um, so for me, this is a great, great, great point for the new Evoke, uh, for Land Rover as a brand in total. So in conclusion, the new Evoke it's much more sophisticated, much more refined, uh, has this reductive, modernist um, approach. It is, it's got a touch of glamour because glamour belongs to Range Rover now, and particularly on a small, uh, edgy car like, like uh, Evoque. It is very progressive, and the materials really demonstrate that. And, uh, most importantly, it is unmistakably evoked. It couldn't be anything else. So hopefully this gives you a really uh, good overview of both cars. I think we'll be around to discuss further. So thank you very much.